We're going to finish off the blood unit with just taking a little bit of a closer look at the immune system and how it works. So we focus in the blood unit on the, the white blood cells, the leukocytes, and the differences between them and some of their functions. But we're going to go a little bit further into depth on just specifically the immune system. So let's get started. So what are we talking about here when we say the immune system? The immune system essentially, it's a grouping of our organs, cells, and proteins that are able to defend against anything in our body that doesn't belong there. So any foreign particles, outside invaders. So what does that constitute? Well, that can be something as simple as a bacteria or a virus that you inhale or you ingest in some way that enter the body. It can also be fungus, though. A lot of times people don't take that for, into account when they think about foreign particles. We actually have several types of fungi that we ingest. And if you've ever had any kind of like athlete's foot or anything like that, those are all fungal um, contaminants. And then finally, chemically produced microbes. So these are things like um, plastics or uh, pathogens that would be um, from pollution or from some source like that. So basically, it's our body's ability to fight off and get rid of anything that exists that doesn't belong. Now, another thing that our immune system is responsible for is maintaining our homeostasis. So when cells reach the end of their lives, they end up dying. And what ends up happening is our immune system comes through and gets rid of those excess cells, especially after it does its job by killing off a, an infection there'll be some, a lot of dead cells there. So this is what's responsible for that. It gets rid of those cells. And then finally, it actually, we have a built-in system fighting against tumors. So cancer, your body's constantly fighting off cancer. And for the most part, it's able to do that unless the tumor gets out of control and then it's beyond the immune system's health. But cancer cells actually secrete chemicals which hide it from the immune system. So a lot of new therapies, when you're talking about cancer research and cancer therapies, actually use our body's own immune system and it kind of kicks it up a little bit so our immune system can fight it off. So what is involved in the immune system? What are we talking about when we talk about the immune system? Well, it's made up of several organs, and the first one is going to be your skeletal system, which includes your bone marrow. All of your, essentially all of your immune cells come from your bone marrow, specifically your red marrow. So it's going to be in your flat bones and the epiphyses of your long bones. Our lymphatic system, which is composed of our spleen, our thymus gland, our lymph nodes, that's going to be your um, lymphatic system. That's going to be part of it. Your tonsils have a big role in your immune system. Um, if you had your tonsils removed, which a lot of people do, um, you can still function without them, but they help by preventing, think of them as just kind of guarding the gates when it comes into breathing in. They're there kind of as a first line of defense. And then finally, your skin um, is, you know, we didn't really get into the skin too much in this class, but your skin helps prevent infection by being a barrier, physical barrier. So those are the main organs involved in the immune system. So what we're going to focus on for the remainder of this lecture is this idea of an innate versus acquired immune system. So let's just talk about the differences between those two, and then we're going to go into detail on each one. I'll probably break this into two separate lectures just for the sake of, of it being too much in one. Okay, so basically when you think of the immune system, you should think of it as having two separate components. The first one is called the innate immune system, also called the nonspecific immune system. And it's what you're born with. So this is not going to be against any specific microbe or infection or pathogen. It's just a general preventative measure against infection. And then there's the acquired immune system, which you're going to develop over your life based off of your exposure to pathogens. So this is going to be the immune system that you have, which can fight off specific antigens. So for example, antibodies. We've been hearing a ton about this because of the virus that we're all dealing with. That's going to be your acquired immune system. So we're going to go into detail on both of these and talk a little bit about them. So I'm probably going to finish this lecture up with the innate immune system, and then I'll have a separate lecture on the acquired immune system. So let's get into detail on the innate immune system. This is what you're born with. This is what is, again, it's nonspecific. These are just general preventative measures. So let's go through some of the major ones. So the first one is going to be mechanical barriers. These are specific, like think of your house, right? Why do you have walls and a door on your house? Well, it's to give you some, it's to protect you from the elements, right? It protects you from rain and, and weather, but it also protects you from people being able to just walk into your house, right? So think of mechanical barriers as our immune system's walls. So the main one is going to be obviously your skin. Our skin is really good at protecting us. It's salty, right? We have sweat and that salt helps prevent bacteria. Um, that's why we have sweat glands. That's one of the main purposes of them. 
the skin is fatty. It's hard for microbes to get in. And that's why when you get a cut, it's such a big deal. When you get an injury, you've now broken that barrier. And all that bacteria that's living on your skin is able to now get into your skin. And it could cause some problems. And also, we have mucous membranes that prevent that are inside the body that help prevent infectious agents from getting in. So one good example of that we learned about in the tissue unit is a pseudostratified epithelium. If you remember, they have little cilia and mucus uh, from the goblet cells that are going to be on the pathway into your lungs. That's going to be your respiratory passages, and that's there to protect you. So when you breathe in, if you breathe in a particle, the cilia will trap it. It'll get caught up in the mucus, and then you just sneeze it out, right? So that's going to be the first thing is the mechanical barriers. Chemical barriers are another preventative measure. So basically, our body will produce these chemicals to help prevent an infection. So the first one is something called an interferon. And we're going to talk more about those when we get to the next part on the specific immune response. But these are produced by lymphocytes and fibroblasts. So these are produced by specific cells. And what they do is they, they actually will spread through the blood and they will attach themselves to uninfected cells that you know, during an immune response, and that actually prevents the viruses from being able to replicate inside of them. So basically, it makes the cells that aren't infected yet harder for the viruses to be able to infiltrate. So think of it as like putting on a little extra armor to prevent the infection. The next one is called the defensin, and these are basically produced by granulocytes. So these are going to be like neutrophils that we talked about. And what they do is they're pretty cool. They actually poke holes in bacterial cell walls. So these will actually go out and attack bacteria cells, not specific bacteria cells, but anyone in general. So anything that doesn't register as being part of the organism, the defensins can go in and actually just like poke holes as if it were a balloon and these cell membranes will pop and then, or cell walls will pop and then you'll kill the bacteria. Something called collectins and collectins are kind of cool. They will attach to the sugars on the outside of pathogens and essentially act like a glue where they clump together and it helps slow them down and it makes it easier for the other cells of the immune system to get to them and attach to them. And finally, we got a couple more. Um, the natural killer cells. These are probably the coolest named cells in the body. They're called NK cells or natural killer cells. And these are actually lymphocytes, so they're white blood cells, but they are released and they are basically just cruising around your system. And what they do is they produce a chemical called a perfor uh, perforin. And a perforin, or a perforin, I say perforin, but I think it might be perforin. They actually will lyse or cut the cell membrane of viruses and cancer cells. So they're a lot like the defensins, but these are in much higher numbers and they're able to go out and they really just... If it doesn't belong, they go and they just destroy those cells. So they're a really big part of our innate immune system and one that is really actually, from what we're understanding, having a big impact on the virus, the COVID virus. Um, one of the reasons they think kids are able to be as protected against the virus as they are is because children have more natural killer cells than adults have. You have more of them when you're younger and as you get older, your body makes less of them and you're you know, acquired immune system kind of picks up the slack. So natural killer cells are a big part of our natural immunity. Inflammation is a big part of our innate immune system. You've probably heard that term before. Inflammation is extremely important for our immune response. What ends up happening is an area is increased, has increased inflammation, which makes the blood vessels more porous. And that allows things to get in and out easier. So you're going to have more fluid going to an area. It also increases the temperature of the area. So if you've ever noticed an infection before, if you've ever had an infection in your finger or anywhere on your skin, if you touch it, it feels really warm. The reason why it feels warm is because of that inflammation. The heat is going to kill some of that bacteria. Um, and also it's going to swell. And the reason why it swells is there, there's more fluid in the area. So what it's doing is it's essentially triggering all these white blood cells to come to the area to kill this infection. And it causes more inflammation. And then eventually it actually walls itself off. It's really awesome how it does this. It will basically encapsulate the area and prevent that infection from spreading to another part of the body. And what you end up with is a raised area because of that inflammation. So inflammation is extremely important for healing, but it is also a lot of times what causes the pain because when there's inflammation, that puts pressure on nerves and that's what causes pain with an infection. So when you push on it, it really hurts. And then the last example of 
a, the innate immune system that we're going to talk about are phagocytes. And phagocytes are going to be neutrophils, monocytes, and macrophages. And these are cells that are just kind of cruising around your blood supply, and they are just going after anything that doesn't belong. So in this image here, you see a neutrophil going after some form of bacteria, and they literally engulf it and digest it and get rid of it. So these are like the cleaning crews. So we have our neutrophils, which we talked about as one of the most abundant, not one of the most, the most abundant white blood cell. And then monocytes actually become macrophage. So monocytes are what they are when they're in the blood, and then once they leave the blood supply and go into the surrounding tissues, they're called macrophage. But they're essentially the same type of cell. They're the large cells that will go around and engulf smaller particles. And I'm going to finish up the acquired immune system in a separate lecture. Thank you very much.